Hello, hello, hello. This is Sandra Louise. And life after the comma really does get better. So if you haven't done so already, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll actually give you a few seconds in case you haven't done it. We all set? Great. All right. Hey, just wanted to jump on here really quick. And uh, as you know, I'm at school. <laughs> so uh, this is starting to be like the only block of time that I really have to make videos um, with so many things going on. And I'm sure that you guys have a lot of things going on too. And so we just have to make time where we can. Um, so one of the things that uh, I have I was praying about this before I came on and I was like Holy Spirit what is it that you want me to bring to uh, to the people today um, now I am in no way and I don't claim to be a, any prophetess or anything like that I simply share the things that God gives me and so one of the things that I had been uh, seeing a lot of, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that you can relate in some way, but be, with everything that's going on right now, there's something in the air. You can just feel it. And I'm telling you, when we look at the things that are happening, I mean, I'm hearing just heinous things that people are doing right now. and if you have not read Matthew 24, I would strongly suggest that you do it. I'm not going to do it on here right now because I just have a, a short amount of time. But in it, you know, Jesus is telling them about the end, uh, the end times, and, um, and the things that are going to come. And he talks about how the days are going to be wicked and people's minds are, you know, they're pretty much going to be on evil all the time. And he talks about the days of Noah, that the days, you know, that in the last days is going to be like the days of Noah. And uh, when we look at the things that are happening now and you go back and you read, about what was happening then there are so many similarities there's so many things that we are actually in we're actually seeing these and we can't be dismissive of of the word we can't pick and choose the things that we want to believe and the things that we don't want to believe if you believe in Jesus, you're going, you cannot overlook the things that he said. And then you have some people that, you know, they they talk about the Bible, well, it was written by man. Well, so are all the other books that you read. They're also written by man. Um, when I hear so many people trying to refute and, and discredit um, the Word of God. I think one of the common weapons that the enemy uses is to get the believer to not believe that they are who God says they are and that they can do what God says they can do, and that God is not who he is. Not just who he says he is, but that he is. You know, the word says that they that come to God must first believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek after him. That requires something on our part. You know, we cannot be ignorant of who we are in Christ Jesus. 
you don't have to look far to see that there are some crazy, crazy, crazy stuff going on. But I believe that we are not to fear, that we are called to step into who God says we were, who we are. If you watch my last video that I posted, I talked about that you're built for this. And it's not a coincidence that you were born when you were born, that you live where you live, that you're in the place that you're at. Because we are all called to be light. We're all called to be to, to, to be change agents wherever we are. And so we can't think that it's strange that we experience different things. None of us want to go through the, the things that we, we go through. But I'm reminded, and, and it was, I was reading in Philippians, and I believe it was the third chapter, um, where he talks about, where Paul talks about the, you know, that there, there were enemies of the cross. You know, there are people that think, you know, they, they have this, this gospel that, you know, as a believer, you're not supposed to go anything, through anything. And if you are going through something, it must be something wrong with you. That your, your faith must not, you're not, you know, who you say you are and, and all of that. And they judge people based on the fact that they're going through something or they, they think that they should be at a certain place that they're not. But I'm reminded that there are some things as a believer that you're going to have to go through just like Jesus went through. Now his was physical. He physically went through and we saw exactly how we're supposed to go through and how we're supposed to bear our own cross. Keep it in mind, after they crucified him, it wasn't enough that he was crucified, that he had been scourged, that he had gone through everything he had gone through. Now he's hanging on the cross and you would think that that would be enough. But they were still mocking him as he hung there. Now, this is relevant to what I'm talking about right now, that you have a cross, I have a cross. We all have one as believers. We don't get to pick and choose what those crosses are. We don't get to pick and choose how long we're gonna have to hang there. But the thing that we know is that if I suffer with them, I'm gonna reign with them. And if I have the same mind that he had, that for the joy that is before me, I can endure my cross, despise the shame of it, and will now be seated at the right hand of the Father. This is what we have to look forward to. You cannot waver in your faith. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how you feel. Has anybody else been experiencing like a, a, a tiredness you know, I know I have. And having to fight back fatigue, just strange fatigue. But I have news for you. There's something that God has in store. Not just in the by and by. I'm not just talking about that. There's some things that God has in store that you can't even imagine. You haven't seen it. It hasn't even entered into your heart. What he has prepared for you. He's seen your pain. He's seen what you've gone through. He's seen what you've had to endure, what nobody else knew 
He knows the things that you didn't even speak about, that you couldn't speak about. Because it was nobody, in, even in your closest circle, that you felt you could even tell. But I want to tell you about a friend that sticks closer than any brother. That he can, you can tell him your secrets. He already knows. And not only does he know, he knows the why behind the what. He knows what you've had to experience, what you've endured. And he knows how, not just does he know what you've gone through, he knows how it has affected you. He knows that too. And so I just want you today to be encouraged. Don't give up. I know you may feel like it and I know it may be hard sometimes to just kind of put everything behind you and and you know drown out the noise. But one of the things that I'm finding for myself, there are times like like David when things weren't were at the worst for David, he encouraged himself. There's going to be times where you don't have a person to talk to, but you have him. And not only do you have him, sometimes, and it may even sound funny, but sometimes I have to get in the mirror and talk to myself and talk to myself the way I would tell somebody else who was going through what I was going through. How would I encourage them? Sometimes we're good at encouraging other people. And I think sometimes that's how God kind of, you know, speaks to us. Have you ever noticed that sometimes when you're going through something, you'll find yourself crossing paths with somebody who's going through the same thing and you find yourself encouraging them, thereby encouraging yourself? I think that's by design. And you're stronger than you think you are. You're better than you think you are. You're worth so much more than you've been told you are. And there's so much more that God has for you. I want you to know that wherever you are, whatever you face, you're not alone. That we have a very present help in our time of trouble. He never slumbers, he never sleeps, and he has never failed and never will. He's got the best track record you've ever known. And the best part about that is he loves you. He really, 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 really loves you. And so I want you to remember that. That no matter what we face, and, and there, there's going to be things that happen that are beyond our control. But you know what? The most prepared we can be is to be in the face of God. To seek His face. We've had enough. We've been seeking His hand. But you know what? He said in His word, if we seek first the kingdom and His righteousness, that everything else would be added to us. I believe what he said. And I don't care how long I have to wait for some things that even I feel like I should have by now. <laughs> I know he knows best and I know first and foremost that he loves me and he's not gonna give me anything before I'm ready for it. And so when I know that, that's the importance about knowing that God loves you. When you know that he loves you, he, you know that his love and whatever comes through your life is based upon his love for you. That sometimes, you know, as a parent, you can't give your kids everything they want because they're not ready for it. 
you have to some some things they have to mature into they have to grow into and so I know that because my daddy loves me that if I if it's something that I don't have right now it's only because he knows something that I don't I, I can't tell you how many times in my life that I have lived to be able to look back at something that I thought I wanted in one season in my life and saw, Lord, I'm so glad you didn't give me that. <laughs> I'm so glad that you didn't listen to me. And so I'm saying that because there's so much more that he has for us. And no matter what we think we've lost, it can't not compare to the things that he has in store. Remember, he's the one that he's going to restore the years that the canker worm, the locust, and the caterpillar have eaten up. He's faithful, and he's going to do it. So with that being said, have a wonderfully blessed and mighty day. God bless you.